is that I took a little break uh, after the road trip with the boys. Uh, I've kind of been parked in the same spot here uh, with Jamie, and Enig Enigmatic Nomadics, and uh, Nick, uh, who rolled up on us in his pretty awesome van and uh, made friends. Um, but I'm all caught up on my vids. I'm gonna head north towards Alaska. Uh, and one of the reasons I was kind of hanging out too, it's been super smoky. A couple video videos ago, we drove through the smoke. Well, it's still it's still on fire a week later. So, anyways, uh, about to jump into a burger here. Jamie made us some burgers, yeah. uh, cheeseburgers, and uh, I've been doing like a bean and vegetable diet, trying to get rid of my keg and also cut costs. For all of the new viewers who have uh, come to my channel uh, the past uh, month or two, I want to introduce you guys to Jamie, also known as Enigmatic Nomadics. I know that there have been several people who have expressed interest in the van life. This guy's been doing it for how many years? Five and a half right now. I started uh, January 1st, 2012. Mm -hmm. And uh, all in the same vehicle here? All in the Astro Van, yes. Yeah, so I get a lot of questions. How do you start the van life? Wow, that's a complicated question because usually we have all kinds of financial entanglements and family obligations. We might have uh, older parents that we're taking care of or younger children we're taking care of or a lease that we need to get out of. There's all, all these things that need to be taken into consideration. But I would start with just researching what you think the right vehicle would be for you and setting up a slow, uh, pragmatic, strategy to leave on the right foot. We don't want to leave in a huff and leave people hanging, leave responsibilities hanging, not give proper notice at work or you know the proper notice in your apartment or whatever those things are. We want to leave under the right conditions so we feel good about it. We have as much money saved up as possible. But I would start with just writing down you know what kind of vehicle you think you would need. You could probably get into this lifestyle for less than you think and then just research things online. I've got a lot of stuff on my channel, Enigmatic Nomadics, of people that have different vehicles. I interview them, what they like, what they don't like, and what they like about the lifestyle, what they don't like about the lifestyle. So that's one place to start, but. Yeah, I would definitely check out some of his videos if you're interested in this kind of stuff. And also, I feel like, uh, agree or disagree, I feel like the van life is something that you could always add to. It, it, like, you know, if you need more electricity, for example, you can always kind of add as you go. Absolutely. When I started out, I didn't have solar. I didn't have my, my van wasn't lifted. I just got out in a van that I bought off of Craigslist for $2,000 and built it up from there. And so wherever you start is fine. There's something that I want to communicate that I've never really said in any of my videos before. And I just think it's real important. I'm probably going to make a video about this at some point. But if you watch what I do, it looks a lot like I live in a van and I camp out in the wilderness. But at a closer look, I'm not really camping for camping's sake. What I've done is I've cut out all of my overhead, such as a mortgage or an apartment and the electric bill and things that would be associated with that, so I can spend more time working on my purpose in life. And that's really what this lifestyle is about. Camping is fine. You know, I, I don't usually sit around a campfire. I don't usually, you know, drink alcohol and, and uh, you know, yuck it up with a bunch of people every night. I don't think I've had a s'more in five and a half years. The, the point that I want to make though is that, you know, this isn't, for me, this isn't about living some camping lifestyle. It is fun to go to national parks. It is fun to drop my dirt bike off and, or my mountain bike off and do those kind of things. But really the reason I chose this lifestyle was so that I would have the free time to focus on my purpose in life rather than uh, be out camping for camping's sake. So it's home, full-time <laughs> freedom. Yeah, this shirt, I think it's awesome. <laughs> that basically sums it up, and this is what I agree with here as well. I have, I basically drive an apartment around, and I'm full-time free. Absolutely, and we can go, within our budget, we can go over where we want to go. I've been in Mexico a couple times now. I'm going to be going back down at the end of the season this year for a couple of months. It doesn't really cost that much more when you do it the right way, but you still are able to enjoy all of the things that everybody else is able to enjoy that is you know, paying the expensive fees at the resort hotels and things like that. So it's really just a matter of, as Timothy Ferris would say, finding the hacks and all these things, but it's all available to all of us. 
And so that's one of the extra things I really like about the lifestyle. Do you ever get people looking at you funny, like you're homeless or anything? Like, who's this guy? I had a guy once, uh, I was on my dirt bike, bringing groceries out from a grocery store parking lot, and this guy came up to me, I'm not kidding, and he said, I know you're not asking, but here's a couple of bucks, man. I hope things get better for you. And I was just wondering, my bike looks like a rat bike. It runs, it's a great bike. But I was just wondering, what is it about me that looks like I need a couple of dollars? So, you know, I guess sometimes, but if you keep your hygiene up and you keep your clothes clean, you just blend in with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one, you had one incident basically in like five years of somebody confusing you for a homeless person. And he gave me money. <laughs> Without even asking. Without even asking. That's awesome. Uh, well, it's been great catching up. Uh, always a pleasure to see you. So, guys, uh, if you're interested in the van life, this guy is a pro. I've learned a lot from him. Uh, go on over and check out his account, uh, his channel. Um, and we're going to hit the road shortly. I'm going to be out of here. I've, I've been the laziest I've been in, I don't know, a couple months. But uh, it's it was well needed. That was a very long two road trips. Uh, after VidCon, so we've been like I said hanging with Nick. Uh, Nick has this thing called the Travato. This is kind of like a, a pre-built uh, van life situation here. So here's the cockpit and the whole back thing. And this thing is made by Winnebago, correct? Right. It's a 2018 Winnebago Travato. It's on the Ram 3500 chassis. It's got a V6, um, 280 horsepower. Gets about 20 miles per gallon. Wow, so 20 miles per gallon. Yeah. Dude, it's you're killing. Man, you're killing me. Yeah. Yeah, there's a uh, also a shower in the back, a toilet and a shower, which is pretty awesome. And uh, Nick was just uh, saying how he transitioned to this uh, lifestyle. But give us a quick uh, breakdown of why you did this. Let me come around the other side. All right. This lifestyle started uh, back in 2014-ish. Came back from uh, Kuwait, retired from the military. Um, and I had originally my Dodge Ram truck, a bumper pull toy hauler, and two motorcycles, which was fine until I decided I want to do a lot of traveling. And I could not maintain all of those separate entities and the gas. So sold all that, ended up in this. It's been killer ever since. Cool. And, and the reason why you got rid of your stuff is because spending all the money on all your toys and your house and your everything, it didn't allow you uh, to travel, correct? Exactly. Exactly. I was spending, I had you know, trying to stay retired, uh, your income is this, and you need to live within that bracket. So uh, this was the most effective way to do that. I, li I like the all-in-one solution here. Yeah. You, get, you yeah. get to live in it, you get to go in it, and, and basically do everything in it. Exactly. So, yeah. high five for the van life. All right, man. <laughs> nice hanging with you. Thank you. We'll see you next Good time. You, man. All right. Fire smoke. Uh, I'm hoping that this clears up uh, the same spot where it began on the drive in because I really don't want to sleep overnight in the smoke. And if I can remember correctly, I am about an hour to two hours away from where the wildfire starts. And this is the reason why it was so hazy over at uh, Yellowstone. Uh, along with some other fires was uh, was this. I'll zoom in here and you can get a little bit better view, but this is uh, obviously close to sunset and it's really nasty out. It looks like uh, it's a bad day in Southern California. The sun is right over that little hillside right there. It hasn't quite set, but that just shows. And I hope you guys can see this because it's a very small monitor I'm looking at on my camera. But that just goes to show how thick the smoke still is out here. It's absolutely insane. Uh, visibility is probably, I don't know, I can see about a, two miles ahead. That's about it. Holy smokes! Now, I got the time lapse going up here, but I just wanted to zoom in and capture this with the big camera because I have never seen anything like this before in my life. We have smoke up top, 
we have some clearing in the middle, and then of course we have the uh, sunset with the uh, mountain straight ahead. It's so eerie looking, uh, it's so crazy. So this is one hour later. We're almost through part of the smoke. As you can see on the left hand side, it's really intense, that's where it's coming from. But uh, further up beyond this one, there's more. Well, that my friends is it for today. I drove, shoot, I don't know, eight hours plus, I think. Uh, I also kept tra track of my mileage today. So I will let you guys know um, next time I calculate it how many miles per gallon I got. But I was going at uh, I was driving with AC on into 40 mile per hour wind. So take that into you know factor two. Oh, also I got my drone back finally. I'm not sure if I let you guys know because um, there were some comments saying. Hey, you shouldn't have flown your drone at Palouse Falls. My drone's been broken, I just got it back today. Um, so I technically didn't fly my drone. I didn't fly any drone, really. Um, anyways, uh, happy about that. Uh, also, <laughs> this little Wi-Fi device, which you can't see, I used over 110 gigs so far, and it is completely unlimited not throttled, no data prioritization. It's $22 and one penny a month, it's insane. Um, so I feel like I should make standalone videos so people can find the information that they're looking for and so it can reach more people instead of burying it in a vlog. So I think I'll, I'm gonna play with a couple standalone ideas, tips, tricks, how-tos, life hacks um, from being on the road. Otherwise, thank you for your time, I know it's valuable. Um, and I will see you guys not on the road tomorrow. I gotta fix up some things here with the bus, oil change, possible coolant change. Um, gotta help my sister move and stuff like that.